Hello, my friends and fellow goats, and welcome to the Command Valley. Before we begin this deck tech, I wanted to remind you that this episode and this podcast is sponsored by GameGrid. If you like this deck or any of the cards inside it, then feel free to head on over to the link in the description box below where you can take a copy and pasteable deck list over to GameGrid's website, put it into their deck builder toolkit, and get those cards shipped right to your house. Another reminder that this episode is brought to you by you and our Patreons at patreon.com slash commandvalley. If you would like to directly support the podcast, then head on over to patreon.com slash commandvalley, check out our awesome perks, join our Discord, get merch sent to you, and a whole lot of other fun stuff. Today I could not be more excited than to show you the build for Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Sakashima of a Thousand Faces is 3 and a blue for a 3-1 legendary creature human rogue. You may have Sakashima of a Thousand Faces enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima of a Thousand Faces other abilities. The legend rule doesn't apply to permanents you control, and he also has partner. Now when Sakashima was spoiled, we did do a little primer video on Sakashima going through the different directions that you could take because there are so many options that you can choose for Sakashima, but, but for this deck, but for the deck that I have built and the deck that I will be playing on the next episode of Duel of the Peaks, I decided to add Tana, the Blood Sower, as his partner. Now, real quick, just to prep you guys, Tana is really here mostly for the colors. I decided to do a teamer build for Sakashima because some of my favorite creatures are in the teamer colors. So the synergy relies heavily on Sakashima and Tana is there for the colors. Now, of course, a build around Sakashima is going to be a clone and copy build because Sakashima himself is a clone and sits in the command zone. We have lots of options to be able to take advantage of that. But Sakashima has another interesting ability saying that the legend rule does not apply to permanents you control, which means we have a mirror gallery that also sits in the command zone, making this deck a lot more unique than most clone decks. To preface this, in the history of Magic the Gathering, we have two types of creatures, creatures that are legendary and creatures that are not. Now, when wizards print legendary creatures, they usually give them very powerful abilities because they assume that you're only going to have one copy of it out at a time, because if you cast another one or have a copy of it, you'll have to sacrifice one due to the legend rule. So this build is a copy build for legendary creatures that were never supposed to be copied. We also have non-legendary creatures in this deck as well, simply because they are just so good not to have includes of them, but most of the creatures that we have are legendary creatures. So with that, let's begin. Now let me begin by going through the legendary creatures that we have put into the Sakashima deck. If you have other favorite legendary creatures, all these legendary creatures you can switch out, play around with what legendary creatures you want, which ones you don't want, but here are the ones I have included. First up, we've got Rurik Thar the Unbowed. He's 6 mana for a 6 6 with vigilance and reach, attacks each combat if able, and whenever a player casts a non creature spell, Rurik Thar deals 6 damage to that player. Very, very helpful, especially in our deck where we have mostly creatures. It can really hose those spell slinging decks by dealing 12 damage to each player who casts a non creature spell. Krenko Mob Boss is 2 red red for a 3 3 legendary creature goblin warrior, and you can tap him to put X 1 1 red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is the number of goblins you control. Now, Krenko is such a powerhouse in goblin decks and a powerhouse on his own that we can include it in this deck because if we cast a Krenko and then we target Sakashima to enter as a copy of Krenko, we have two Krenkos, which means in one turn we can tap the first Krenko, get two more goblin tokens because we have two Krenkos, and then we can tap Sakashima to get four more goblin tokens. Each turn after that, it just gets crazier and crazier. Karuga the Macrosage is three Simic Simic hybrid for a 5-4 Dime Sword Hippo, and when he enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with converted mana cost three or greater. Now this is very helpful in the card draw situation where we can cast Karuga, draw some cards, then make copies of Karuga to draw into more cards to make more copies and find some other legendary creatures. God Eternal Ronus is 3 green green for a 5-5 five five zombie god with death touch and when he enters the battlefield double the power of each other creature you control until end of turn. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. So copying Ronus we can start doubling our creature's powers and get in for some big attacks let alone that it stacks so you cast the first God Eternal Ronus. You have a 5-5 five five out, it becomes a 10-10. You cast a Sakashima targeting the God Eternal Ronus. Now that 10-10 becomes 20-20 and so on. Borborygmos is 3 red red green green for a 6-7 Cyclops with Trample and whenever it deals combat damage to a player put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control. That can get pretty out of hand when you have multiple copies of him. Nikia of the Old Ways is 3 red green for a 5-5 five five legendary creature center druid. He reads you can't cast non-creature spells, but whenever you tap a land for mana, add 1 mana of any type that land has produced. 
And of course, since a lot of the spells that we have in this deck are pretty large, having the ability to double our mana and then casting a copy of Nakia to triple our mana can give us some very explosive plays. Niv Mizzet Perun is blue, 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 red, red, red for a 5 5 Dragon Wizard. This spell can't be countered. He's got flying, and whenever you draw a card, Niv Mizzet Perun deals 1 damage to any target. And whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. I'm sure all of us have played against the Niv Mizzet deck, and we know that Niv Mizzet is just a pain in the butt to deal with, but how would you like to deal with multiple copies of Niv Mizzet? Now, doesn't that sound fun? Sure does for me. Momir Vig, Simic Visionary, is 3 green blue for a 2 2 elf wizard. Whenever you cast a green creature spell, you may search your library for a creature card and reveal it. If you do, shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. And whenever you cast a blue creature spell, re reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put that card into your hand. Again, one of those legendary creatures that just does so much just by itself that having two copies of it can just draw you so many cards, tutor up so many creatures that it's just, you gotta play, you gotta play Momirvik. Jorian Ruin Diver is one blue red for a 2 3 legendary creature Merfolk Wizard, and whenever you cast your second spell each turn, draw a card. Just some nice card advantage whenever we cast our second spell, and it only applies to us, which is really nice. Omnath Locus of Rage is 3 red red green green for a 5 5 legendary creature elemental with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 5 5 red and green elemental creature token. And whenever Omnath Locus of Rage or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals 3 damage to any target. One of my favorite includes for this deck, even though we are not playing a landfall deck, Omnath just gives so much advantage on his own that having multiple copies of him and give you such a large advantage over the board that it's very, very hard not to include him. I do have an example of that that I will tell you after I introduce this card. Brutaclad Telcor Engineer is for blue red for a legendary artifact creature artificer. Creature tokens you control have haste. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 2 1 blue mirror artifact creature token. Then you may choose a token you control. If you do, each other token you control becomes a copy of that token. Now, Brutaclad and Omnath are best friends in this deck, only simply because I did play a game with this deck where I casted a copy spell that made a token copy of Omnath with Sakashima out so that they weren't exiled, so that the legend rule didn't cause me to sacrifice any of them. And then I casted a Brutaclad, which created a token, which created a copy of Omnath, which meant I had four Omnaths, and then I cast a ramp spell getting four 5 5 elementals. It was just wild and just a lot of fun. Moving on, we have Riku of Two Reflections. For two blue, red, green, we have a 2-2 human wizard, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may play you may pay blue and a red. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. And whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay green blue. If you do, put a token, that's a copy of that creature, onto the battlefield. Again, some redundancy to our creature copying. We can cast our creatures and then make tokens of them with Riku. Nylea Keen Eyed is three and a green for a legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible. And as long as your devotion to green is less than five, Nylea isn't a creature. However, creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. You can pay two and a green to reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. So you would be able to copy Nylea as an enchantment with a lot of our copy spells, but once it does become a creature, we can start discounting our creatures massively. Kogla the Titan Ape is 3 green 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 for a 7-6 legendary creature ape. When he enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control, and whenever he attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. You can also pay 1 or green to return target human you control to its owner's hand, and it gains indestructible until end of turn. Some really nice artifact and enchantment interaction. Making multiple copies, you can start taking out those pesky enchantments and attack at the same time. And then last up, we've got Teferi, Mage of Zalfir, which is two blue, blue, blue for a 3-4 legendary creature human wizard with flash. Creature cards you own that aren't in play have flash, and each opponent can play spells only any time he or she could play a sorcery. Now, we don't really get benefits from copying Teferi. However, the ability to give our creature cards flash gives us a ton of flexibility and allows us to interact really well with the board. All right, now let's move on to our non-legendary creatures. We have quite a few, and these are some of my favorites. Again, you can include whichever ones you want, but here are some great startups. One of my personal favorites, Biovisionary, is one green blue for a 2-3 creature human wizard. At the beginning of the end step, if you control four or more creatures named Biovisionary, you win the game. That is very, very easy to do in this deck. A very good alternate win condition, and just, ugh, I love Biovisionary. Sower of Temptation is 2 blue blue for a 2 2 creature fairy wizard with flying, and, and when Sower of Temptation comes into play, gain control of target creature as long as Sower of Temptation remains in play. Steal some of our opponent's creatures, make copies, steal some more creatures, just a great time. 
Illusionary Ambusher is four and a blue for a four one cat illusion with flash. And when he end, and when he is dealt damage, draw that many cards. Really, really nice if your opponent is swinging at you with some big dummy. You can draw a bunch of cards or have it out on the battlefield and make copies of it so your opponents are disincentivized to attack you. Otherwise, you're going to draw a buttload of cards. Combustible Gear Hole is four red red for a six six with first strike. And when he enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If the player doesn't put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Now, just one Combustible Gear Hulk doesn't really do a lot. They may let you draw three cards. You may deal some damage to them. But having multiple copies entering the battlefield as copies of Combustible Gear Hulk will force your opponents to make hard choices because we have a lot of high casting cost spells in this deck. Terror of the Peaks is three red red for a 5-4 creature dragon with flying. Spells your opponents cast that target. Terror of the Peaks cost an additional three life to cast. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Now this is one of those cards that isn't legendary, but probably should have been. It's so potent and powerful on its own. But just imagine, we cast a Terror of the Peaks, then we cast Sakashima, targeting the Terror of the Peaks. We deal five damage to an opponent. Now we have two. We cast another cone spell that targets the Terror of the Peaks. Now we're dealing 10 damage to any target. And it just goes on and on from there. Thunderfoot Bailoth is four green green for a five five beast with trample and lieutenant. As long as you control your commander, Thunderfoot Bailoth gets plus two plus two and other creatures you control get plus two plus two and have trample. This is something very nice that we can stack up. We can make multiple copies of the Bailoth and really pump our team up as well as giving them trample, a worthy include for this deck. Spellbreaker Behemoth is one red green green for a five five. It can't be countered and creature spells you control with power five or greater can't be countered. Again, like to ferry this one doesn't necessarily need to be copied. However, this does assure that your high casted spells and a lot of your legendary creatures cannot be interacted with on the stack, which is very important. Beast Whisperer is two green green for a two three. Elf Druid, whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Making multiple copies of this, casting multiple creatures, we can draw a ton of cards. Reclamation Sage is two and a green for a two one. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. Not necessarily something we want to copy, but very helpful in a pinch. And a auto include in most green decks. Fierce Empath is two and a green for a one one. And when he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost six or greater. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. We can tutor up the creatures that we need, whether it be a Niv Mizzet, Brutaclad, lots of fun options there. And then lastly, we have Eternal Witness, which is one green green for a two one. When he enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So in the late game, when a lot of our creatures have been removed, a lot of our spells have been removed, we can cast the Eternal Witness to get some cards back, cast clones that copy the Eternal Witness to get more back, and it kind of loops from there. So those are the non-clone spells. Now let's move on to our redundancy, which is having a lot of clone spells that can copy the creatures that we're casting. Sakashima himself does come in as a clone, but we want to make sure that we have a lot of other clone spells so we can make a bunch of legendary creatures, non-legendary creatures that cause a lot of havoc. First up, we've got Clever Impersonator, which is two blue blue for a zero zero shapeshifter. You may have Clever Impersonator enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-line permanent on the battlefield. Clone is three and a bloom for a zero zero shapeshifter and you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature. Vizier of Many Faces is two blue blue for a shapeshifter cleric. When he enters the battlefield, you may have Vizier of Many Faces enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except if Vizier of Many Faces was embalmed, the token has no mana cost, is white, and is a zombie in addition to its other types, and also embalms for three blue blue. Altered Ego is X2 green blue for a 0 0 shapeshifter. It can't be countered, and you may have Altered Ego enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it enters with X additional plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Wall of Stolen Identity is 3 and a blue for a 0 0 shapeshifter wall. You may have Wall of Stolen Identity enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's a wall in addition to its other types and has Defender. When you do, tap the copy creature, and it doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control Wall of Stolen Identity. Now, you probably might start to notice that a lot of these copy spells can copy any creature on the battlefield which represents one of the funnest things in the Sakashima deck which is you can copy your opponent's creatures say if your opponent is playing a Chulane one of them's playing a Yarrick another one is playing Korvold you can start making copies of them on your side cast the Sakashima targeting your copies of them and then start going nuts with their own legendary creature 
Moving on, we've got Spark Double, which is three and a blue for a zero zero illusion. You may have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or planeswalker you control, except it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. If it isn't a creature, it enters with an additional loyalty counter on it if it's planeswalker. And it isn't legendary if that permanent is legendary. Progenitor Mimic is four green blue for a zero zero shape shifter. You may have Progenitor Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep if this creature isn't a token, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of this creature. One of my favorite copy spells that can just give you so much advantage throughout the game, creating free token copies every single upkeep. We have Cryptoplasm, which is one blue blue for a 2-2 shapeshifter. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may have Cryptoplasm become a copy of another target creature. If you do, Cryptoplasm gains its ability. A really, really unique and underrated copy card because we can cast this before casting Sakashima, which means we can wait for wait to see what our opponents are casting, have Cryptoplasm copy that on our upkeep, and then cast Sakashima targeting the copy that Cryptoplasm has chosen. And then last up, of course, we had to include Rite of Replication. For two blue blue, we have a sorcery with kicker within a kick with a kicker cost of five generic. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature. If Rite of Replication was kicked, put five of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. This card is just this card is absolutely nuts in this deck. There is a game I played where I had a Brutoclad and I had a Sakashima that was a copy of the Brutoclad. I casted a Rite of Replication kicked, targeting the Brutoclad, and I got five tokens of the Brutoclad. All those, all those tokens had haste, and at the beginning of my combat, I made seven tokens, which all copied the Brutoclads, and just went nuts. You gotta include this card, guys. All right, so that is the pillar of the deck. Now, a lot of these spells have a high converted mana cost, which means we have a lot of ramp in this deck to be able to get there, make sure that we're always getting the mana that we need to cast those spells. For our mana rocks, we have Is It Signet, Gruel Signet, and Simic Signet, a Fellow R Stone, an Arcane Signet, a Star Compass, and Chromatic Ori, which is really nice, letting us draw more cards. For our non rock ramp, we have Kodama's Reach, Roiling Regrowth, Rampant Growth. Far Seek and Cultivate, and then we've included Great Henge in this deck, which is seven green green for an artifact, and it costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Tap it to add two green and gain two life. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card, which is very, very nice in this deck. We're playing a lot of creatures, and our clone effects are also creatures, which means we can keep drawing into more clones, more legendary creatures, and pop off. Now moving on to our card draw, a lot of our card draw is actually in the creatures that we're casting, but we do have some other non-creature card draw. We have Teamer Ascendancy, which is green, blue, red for an enchantment. Creatures you control of haste, and whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Return of the Wild Speaker is 4 and a green for an instant. Choose 1, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. Harmonize is two green green for a sorcery that lets you draw three cards. We are also playing Mystic Remora and Ristic Study, which are some powerhouses in blue card draw. And then lastly, I've included four big spells in this deck that I think you guys should include in your deck as well. First off, we have See the Unwritten, which is four green green for a sorcery. Reveal the top eight cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield and put the rest into your graveyard. And if you have Ferocious, you may put two creature cards onto the battlefield instead of one. That can hit our clones, our legendary creatures, our non-legendary creatures, and it's very easy for us to have Ferocious. Genesis Ultimatum is green green, blue blue blue, red red for a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library, put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand, then exile Genesis Ultimatum. A mass majority of our deck are just permanents, which means Genesis Ultimatum is a perfectly worthy include for this deck. Mind's Dilation is five blue blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts his or her first spell each turn, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. If it's a non land card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. This is really nice to be able to get those powerful creatures off of your opponents and then start casting your copy spells and your clone spells to target the creatures that you're stealing from your opponents. And then lastly, we've got Sunbird's Invocation, which is five and a red for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You may cast a card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost and put the red of, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now the sequencing with Birds of Invocation is really fun because we can cast one of our legendary creatures, then Sunbird's Invocation will trigger, we'll look at the top five or six cards, hopefully hit a clone, and then we can cast that clone to target the legendary creature right off the bat. All right, my friends, that is the deck. If you want to see a full deck list, then go ahead and look in the show notes below. We will include a copy and pasteable deck list that you can take right to Game Group's website and order it and get it shipped right to your house. 
I hope you guys really enjoyed this deck, and I hope you guys enjoy the next episode of Duel of the Peaks coming out this Friday, where I will be playing this deck and having a lot of fun doing it. If you have any other recommendations, other legendary or non-legendary creatures that you like that you would put into this deck, feel free to comment them in the comment section below, or let me know what other partners you have put with Sakashima and how you've built those decks. A quick reminder that we stream Brawl every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Come on over to twitch.tv slash commandvalley and hang out with us while we play Brawl, talk about Commander Legends, and have a great time. If you aren't already subscribed, then please subscribe to the channel and check out all of our other content, including our gameplays, other deck techs, and podcast episodes. With that, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there, my friends and goats, and I will see you on Friday for Duel of the Peaks.